Controlling what is accessible and by whom is a big part of app design. Implementing role-based security in Power Apps can be done in several different ways. For instance, you could use a SharePoint list, you could use a SQL table, or you could even use an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of users and their access levels. Any one of these solutions would work, but as access levels change over time, so must your app be able to configure those changes. Meaning, you're going to have to build some kind of admin interface. And this may not always be ideal, especially if you're in a time crunch. You could, however, use SharePoint groups, new or existing, to achieve exactly the same thing without building an additional interface. It's already there, right out of the box. I love this method of access control. SharePoint already has built-in delegation of ownership and maintenance of such groups for anyone in the organization. As an added bonus, the same SharePoint groups can be used to secure and control SharePoint content that ties in with your solution. That's definitely a win-win. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Flow because Flow is gonna do most of the work for us. And let's click on new. Let's just go blank, let's skip that stage. And let's just go straight for Power Apps Trigger. All that means is I'll be triggering this flow from Power Apps directly. On the next step, I want to initialize a variable. I'm going to call that variable is admin. And it's just going to be a Boolean. Next variable I'm going to initialize is called a user group info. Oh, <laughs> getting ahead of myself there. Initialize variable user group info and that'll just be a string. Next step will be this next step will be actually calling the SharePoint HTTP service. The address we need, well, first off, we need to give it the site address of um, where that group has been created. So let's go ahead um, and create that now. I've just got a SharePoint site here called Project Apex and I'm going to go into site permissions here. I'm going to go to advanced permissions. I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to call this Apex Admins. Who can view the members of this group now? We want everyone to be able to view members, but only the group owner can edit the members of the group. Now we're just going to give that group also read access to the site. click OK and in here I'm going to add a new user. I'm going to add Susie here and Susie's just my manager. So let's not send her an email. And I'm going to remove myself because we don't want to, the application to recognize me as a manager at first. So only, sorry, to recognize me as an admin of our application. So we only want uh, Susie to be recognized as an admin at this stage. So let's go back to our flow. Well, in here, let me just grab our site address. So in the site address here, I'm just gonna paste I'm gonna paste my SharePoint site. And in the URL, just to save me from typing all of this, I've got some of it already in Notepad here. So, open single quote, and I call the group Apex Admins. It's about to type Apex Legends there, Apex Admins and close bracket forward slash users question mark 
this is a pretty long string here. Basically, what this is, it's the full web service call to SharePoint. And this is a parameter I'm passing here. So the parameter will be, I want to filter the result, return result, when email is equal to open single quote. I'm going to ask for that string value in Power Apps because I'm going to send the email address I want to check from Power Apps to my flow. And that's what that value there is. And then close quotes at the end. Close single quote at the end. Okay, so that's that step. Next step, I want to set, an, set a variable. And the variable I'm setting is the user group info. And in here, actually, before I do that, let me just rename this step. I'm just going to call this check user group. This will just make it easier to reference in this line here. So under here, we're setting the user group info. And in the variable, I want to do an expression. The expression will be body. And in here, checking the body of the check user group action in our workflow. And because I know that returns back a certain structure, I know just type this results. So that is pretty typical of a SharePoint web service call. And uh, it's just returning uh, back a JSON string or JSON packet. And these are the two arrays that I want to traverse down into before I return my results back. Now, basically what's going to happen here is that this web service call will either return back no, no result or result or just a blank array here for results if the user I pass to it does not exist in that user, uh, in that sh uh, SharePoint group. Um, if if the user that I pass to it does exist, then I'll get a whole heap of data back from uh, about that user. But really I'm just concerned with if it returns anything back or not. So let's click okay on that. And to check that if it has returned anything back, I need to do a condition. And I'm looking for is user group info not equal to open quotes star double quotes open square brackets close square brackets and close double quotes so if it doesn't equal that then i'm going to set a variable and i'm going to set the is admin variable to true because i'm saying here if it's not blank, then, or if this array is not, not blank, then, um, then that user I pass to it, that web service must be an admin because they're a member of that particular group. So that returns back true. And if it doesn't, I'm going to Set the is admin to false. So if it is, if it does equal that, then it, then they're not an admin because it's returned back a blank array. So therefore, I'm going to set that variable to false. The last step I want to do is I'm just going to respond to Power Apps.
and I'm just gonna send that is admin variable. Click save. And that has actually given it a pretty dumb name. Let's just call it check admin. Okay. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is just go into Power Apps and test this. Let's create a new blank app. I'm just going to call this admin check. So let me just do a really quick demo of um, testing that admin value. On screen one, I want to associate that flow on visible. And in here, I'm going to pass it my email address. What we actually want to do is we want to set a variable here. Because we want to use the value that that workflow re returns back to Power Apps. And we want to push that into a variable called admin user. Okay, so let's add a couple of boxes on the screen here, just so I can quickly demonstrate to you how we can use those values or how we can use that value returned back from flow. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to drop a couple of boxes onto the screen here. Maybe make that a little smaller. I'm going to make one of them red. Keep the other one blue. Let's go with another couple of labels as well. I am an admin. Not an admin. Okay. So hopefully you get the drift of what I'm doing here. So in this particular box, I'm going to go on visible. So if admin user is admin because this is the way um, Flow returns something back to, um, this is the sort of structure Flow returns back to Power Apps. This is the actual string here, but it re the, the string that we declared is almost returned back to Power Apps as a record. So we have to, um, we have to treat it as a record but it is still, we know that the actual value that we get back is going to be a string. So it admin user is admin equals false. Well, let's say if it's equal to true, then we want to show this. Otherwise we don't want to show it. Over here. If it's equal to false, then we're not an admin. Then we don't, we want to show it. We don't want to show it. Okay, so let's run that. And you can see now that my app is recognizing me as not being an admin. And that's based on the result that is returned back from Power App, from Flow. Now, if we go back to SharePoint, we can see the group that we set up, Apex Admins, is um, only got Susie in as, um, as an admin. So this is why Power Apps is not recognizing me as being an admin. Now, 
this is a, an extremely simple example of how to implement or how you would implement this particular function. Of course, you could now use this in any number of ways. Um, you could filter galleries on this. You could prevent a user from going any further into the app by say hiding and showing menu items. You could um, restrict a whole restrict basically anything inside of your Power App based on the result that is returned from Flow. Now, just to double check that, if we go into uh, people and groups, so this is our group, Apex Admins, and if I add a new user, and now I'm gonna add myself, Now both Susie and myself are listed as Apex Admins. If we go back to my app and I'll just refresh that web service call or refresh that call to flow. Now it is recognizing me as being an admin. So this is a really simple example where I've used that SharePoint group to determine if a user is an admin or not. And we've been able to manage those admin users through the SharePoint interface rather than having to build a custom interface in Power Apps. But you could go uh, way further with this. You could create multiple SharePoint groups based on not just admin role, but a whole heap of different roles within your application and have that um, manage your different access levels within your app. Say you may have an admin level, which may be like godlike access and have access to all the sections within your application, including say admin um, dashboards, uh, diagnostic data, that kind of thing. And then you may have just um, standard user access, which means that you can, um, you might get some access to some input forms or uh, some certain functionality. And then uh, power user, which may have somewhere in between ad, um, admin and end user functionality. Hi guys, thanks for watching another video. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest content. And of course, remember to also hit the bell button if you want to be absolutely sure to be notified when anything new comes out. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.